It's part two and the finale of our interview with attorney at law, CEO, dynamic speaker, and MC, phenomenal woman, Rochelle Cameron. Stay tuned. The most prominent producer then mm -hmm. in the industry tell Tony that he could not boss a female artist because wow, failing is one thing. Failing publicly is is a is a very hard thing. And I said I was all in my mouth. The lies were going, and I put, I sat and I saw women on the TV just lying bluntly, just just like that. Please, the all media survey. When you look at the name Ron Michelle, zero, what? zero, zero. You know, I had to fend for myself at an early age. In fact, my mother became mentally ill when I was nine years old. I sold everything and went to my wife and said, and she said to me, all right, no problem. She will, she will butt me. Just don't, just, just leave the house. From entertainers, politicians, business leaders, and more, the Trailblazers with Tamar McHale on YouTube you has it all. That I'm new. I did movies with Denzel Washington. Then I wrote Baps, and that's starring Halle Berry. You yeah. wrote Baps? I wrote Baps, oh, yeah. Oh no! Like Subscribe now for a brand new year of inspiration are, and strategies to make it from the oh, best of the best. <laughs> Plus, catch up on episodes you may have missed. It's the Trailblazers with Tamar McHale on YouTube. So I mean, there's so much gems coming <laughs> from you. I, I like my mind is racing. <laughs> But in terms of even the point where learning to silence that negativity when those doubts come and then having that circle of people that can reinforce the positive messages then, which you <laughs> have in those cases, like there's just so many nuggets of wisdom coming through um, that I really appreciate you sharing. So from your, your journey so far, what has been the most rewarding for you? Because you have your own business, your own company. I mentioned it at the top, uh, Prussian Consulting. Tell me a bit about that because we see you as a transformational speaker as well. We see you out there doing your thing on the big stage, inspiring thousands, hundreds of thousands as a John Maxwell certified speaker as well. So is this something that was also part of your, you knew was part of your purpose or it just kind of another opportunity that presented itself for yeah. you? You know, I've been actually thinking about that a lot because one of my next phases is I'm going to do um, more speaking coaching. Mm -hmm. So helping people more with presentations and speaking on stages. So... Was it something that like I used to sit down and think about? No, I mean everybody wants to be Oprah, but it wasn't like something that you that I, I thought seriously about at all. And the joke is that MC was you remember I always say I give jokes. So that's what my friends know before. I am like the life of the party. I always I'm always busting a joke, and and I am that friend that in the darkest times we will cry, but we'll have a a little giggle too. And one of my good friends, years ago, she's getting married and she's like, you're the MC." And I'm like, are you crazy? I mean, I've never emceed anything in my life. And she's like, you're the MC," And she's like, you're so funny. You can figure it out. And I, I, I've never been so stressed before because I always think emceeing, and it's funny, it is one of the things that I probably like and dislike the most because I find there is, I feel a, a big sense of responsibility at an event to keep that flow going. I have to pay attention. My friends, I'm too intense with it. But I believe if you have been invited to MC an event, it's not a joke thing. Sure. You're, you're taking that function along. You need to be paying attention, keeping the energy going, keeping your energy going. And sometimes you don't have no energy, you know, but again, you have to leave the, the problems outside and you got to put on bigger panties and jump in and do what you said you are going to do. So still, when people ask me, I'm, I keep no matter what the event is, and it's it's always funny to people. I get super super nervous, super nervous, um, just like the first time. Um, when people ask me to MC or to speak an event, at event, I still say, "Wow, you picked me. That's interesting. Thank you." And I'm really so honored that you'd even want to hear from me. And I never want to lose that sense of wonder. Um, I, I never that. want to lose that sense, even those heebie-jeebies and that nervousness, because it, it it reminds me, no matter the size of the event, I'm bringing, I'm giving you 150%. I'm coming dressed to the nines. I'm prepared. If I'm presenting on your business, I know your business more than you, because I, I, I put my 
all into it. So I just started emceeing my friends' weddings and I just go to, I, I got, and I all hear the week before that I'm the MC. And I'm like, we have all, they're like, that's what we never said it, but that's why we're having this conversation because you're the MC. Wow. And that, <laughs> that segued into speaking because it is it's it is the same discipline. Yes. Um, but I'm able to in the speaking use my life experiences and business experiences, and I spend a lot of time learning the theory behind things so that I can explain them in a practical way that people can laugh and be and relax so that they can get the learning. Because you know when you all stick up and say oh, it's a boring topic and stuff and she a liar, she'll come with a boring thing. Mm -hmm. So I do spend a lot of preparatory time. And again, I never want to think that I'm 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 too good for that. Because all of that is part of, of, of the experience that I bring to an event and to any speaking engagement. Um, do I love it? I I do a lot. Um, but it 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 I present myself when I go. So I always think I leave everything on the dance floor. So I'm usually super exhausted after. And I, I, people are always surprised how I am at an event because they think I'm going to come in and want to sit at the head table. No, I need a chair in the, the back. In fact, can I not go in the room until you're ready for me? And I usually cannot speak to anyone. I mean, I am an absolute wreck. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. And then it's like once you go on stage, you just speed okay. up that energy and you, you become yeah. the, okay. the stash yeah. of Paris to Beyonce. Yeah. Ego. But it's humbling. It yeah. is very humbling that people would ask you and actually pay you to present at their event. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I take that as, as a gift. And it's a gift that I do not take lightly. Um, but I treat I, I treat everything in my life that way, um, and I treat everybody that way. So regardless of who has called me, um, I, I, I don't need a CEO to call me to feel privileged to be a part of the event. His assistant can call me, the HR assistant, whoever. In fact, the fact that you have reached out to me and I'm, I'm, I, I've am i learned my country, like when you go with the grandma, you learn to be respectful. So if you ask me what my real skills are, I'm, I'm a fairly good lawyer. There are people that are much better than me. I'm an okay speaker. I'm sure, there are people that are better than me. But what I bring is I bring my authentic self, whoever that person is that day. <laughs> my authentic self changes. <laughs> but also I bring with me the humility of knowing, knowing that you picked me and you're asking me for one thing, to bring my best game face, to deliver. That's all you're asking me to do. And I'm going to do that. Wow. Um, in terms of what I'm proudest of, um, so I gave birth to two things in 2019. One was Prescient Consulting Services Limited. Um, a, a name that a friend of mine, the same day that I said, that is the name of the company. She came to my office and she opened the door and she have an, I said, I have a name that you need to register for the company that you're going to form. And I was like, what? And we both go Prescient. And we both nearly passed out. It was crazy. And you know, it's not a regular word. Oh, exactly. Like, really? <laughs> it's not like hat. Our I know. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's so it. Whoa. Crazy. That was more than confirmation. <laughs> more than confirmation. Yeah. Um, so this would have been like in 2017, 2018. I'd already, and that same friend, her name is Avadon. Um, Avadon had helped me with the moniker for my speaking because by then I'd started doing a lot of speaking engagements and and I call myself the reluctant speaker I'm always like wow she's on peace again why did not I ask okay oh lord oh lord oh lord um so but she was like have she always says you need to watch videos of yourself I rarely watch videos I will book up on a video of myself and I'll speed it through um because I actually I don't listen to I don't like to to watch myself on screen it's oh what really some of the neurosis that they say give me energy 
Oh, okay, okay. No, because like somebody that does TV and stuff, I, I, I like to watch about myself. To I'm my biggest critic. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah. oh, you shouldn't have said that. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I do that. I get into the critique so much that I find that what it does is that it it does the reverse for me that oh. I spent so much time saying you should have said that you didn't pronounce that word properly you didn't look like an idiot right there so you know but I know that in my head I know what I could have done better because I always no matter how people think it was great I know there was something I could have done done better I'm gonna do it better the next time yeah. um so adrenaline rush came up because of that. And as you can see, I'm watching myself here now with my hand movements. I have a lot of energy. <laughs> you do, but we love it. You keep it, you keep it exciting and spicy, you know? I have a lot of energy. So that's where adrenaline rush and Avadon actually came up with that Monica adrenaline wow. rush. Um again, it was just a little thing, you know, it's not like nothing that we're be serious. It's a little thing. Then prescient starts, and when um when I decided to go full blown, I already had clients waiting on me. Confirmation again. You remember when I said when Whoa. God had been my path? And then um you remember I also said earlier that when you said you were doing Carimac in the late two thousands, I was already working, which means that and you did Cape. I didn't do Cape. I knew I was a big woman when Cape came around. So I was now in my mid forties and giving birth to a child, the darling of my life. He's the, he's the proudest. My proudest moment was becoming a mother. Um, and I, I wouldn't, I, I, I wasn't meant to have children earlier than I did. Yeah. I had things, I had some things that God had me on a path to do. So I'm meant to do it now. And, and there's a whole journey. I'm going to one day write a book about, 45 and being given birth wow starting over that journey at that time which is just a, a, a different type of mothering um than if i was in my 20s but yeah. it does not come any less with the the worry the am i doing things right but i i i felt that at that time it was just it was just it was amazing it was amazing but made it free it Oh my gosh. I mean, I was, and then I was just like, whoa. I said, 40 past, 41 past, 42 past. So, you know, Lord, I'm going to have this panelist again. Man, go Greece this year. It's a big travel year for me. And me said, you're not to pick no? You're not pick no? <laughs> but I mean, that is such a powerful testimony again about your story because, again, it's, it's it's trusting the timing of your life because a lot of times we 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 feel like we have to follow all of these societal constructs. Yeah. So you know, finish school at this, get married and have your kids by you know when you reach thirty or you know stuff <laughs> like that or with the, or your early thirties there about yeah, and 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 for you to say that it wasn't until by the way don't say that because it's you don't even look that so. I'm just Thank saying, you. yeah. <laughs> but for you to even say that, that's like, wow. So, I mean, how how crucial is trusting the timing of your life and not what society dictates? How crucial it is, is crucial, but it is not easy. Um, I think worse to know with social media where um, we, we, I would have grown up in a time that you, people had to tell you the story of what they were doing. You weren't literally seeing it unfold. Um, there is a, a sense of self that I find that we are struggling as human beings with now, this identity. Um, who am I? And so I'll preface it by saying, you know, at the end of the day, as with anything, timing is about you. It's about your journey. There's a blueprint for your life. Um, when the mold was made for you, the mold throw away. There is no one like you. Only you can live your life. So the other people's lives, only them can live it. So you have to like step out of them own and focus on, on yours and the timing for yours. You also have to, to focus on, on what... I call the promises are for your life. Some you may have gotten a wind of. Most of them you don't know. But we have the promise for our life. 
Um, when I got into my 40s, I was okay being rich auntie. I knew that a big part of my purpose was being a part of the village that raised the children. And I thoroughly enjoyed that. I wanted to build a career and I did it. And I was also willing to be okay with people. Because, you know, people always have a thing like you're never, you're never good enough, you know, in other people. You always need more. So you have to decide if like you're good with your current circumstance and celebrate your current and your timing. Even as we are going through with timing, we have to believe. We have to believe in our life. We have to believe in the importance and the value of our life. Forget everybody for a moment. So when somebody, when somebody says to me, so Rochelle, who are you? Who, you know, what's your authentic self? My authentic self changes. <laughs> my 16-year-old authentic self is not my current authentic self because she has changed. Yeah. That little girl has grown up. But she also has that sense of wonder still. And I am okay if you do not like the trajectory of my life. I'm okay with that. I love I'm that. Okay. I really um, love that. And I love where you spoke about having that sense of wonder. That's something that I believe in. And like, you know, m like my friends would be like, okay, when we're like, you know, in, in high school and then you're young adults and then you're adults now and you're like, okay, certain dreams that they had when they were like maybe 10 years ago when they're leaving sixth form or high school and then they're no adults, you're like, they, don't, they put aside those dreams because they don't think it's possible anymore because they're like, okay, reach late 20s, 30s now. How is it crucial for you to always have that sense of wonder and belief in what your divine purpose or purposes is because it can be multifaceted? Yeah. How crucial is that? Because I'm somebody who, I just always still have that childlike faith. So I mean, <laughs> and, and, I, and that's why when you say it, it resonates with me. Yeah. So I'm like, and then they say, I'm lucky. They'll be like, you're just lucky. Like things are, but I mm -hmm. feel like it's having that sense of wonder it and having that belief, which helps. So yeah, how, how is. critical is that? So, you know, it's funny. Let me just start with what you said, you know, that people, people, there's always an excuse for something. So the reason why you're able to do that is because you're lucky. I'm like, when I was up at night studying, when I don't sleep for two days, where were you? There's no luck in that. No luck in that. Because I put in the work for this. So I, I in my head, I'm like always 27. I don't want some magic of 27. I just like 27. <laughs> so I just like 27. Um, and I, I, I believe that my life is unfolding and it continues to unfold and fascinate and surprise me and will continue until the day I die. So in my 40s, I'm still a young woman. In my 50s, I'm still a young woman. I'm as young as that day that I can throw my feet over that out of that bed and jump up. And when I cannot go anymore and them have to feed me and take me outside and sun me, I still, I'm still wondering about what tomorrow can bring. Yeah. Because in my head, my aging is, is, is a space of the learning. Aging is about the experience. But my spirit, my spirit, I am still 16. I'm still in awe of what God can do. And what happens to us is we stop being in awe of ourselves and what we are capable of. And we put eight specific times to it. We put labels on it. We are afraid to step out of uncomfortable situations, out of spaces that are not suiting us anymore because we get so comfortable in it. And we start saying, but me too old for do this, me too old for do this. You are as old as you decide that you are. And what you're going to do in the meantime, spend the rest of your days bitter? No. Hold your titties and jump. <laughs> Hold your balls and jump. Take a chance on yourself. And the day, you know when we get old? When we get old is when we stop believing. 
when we stop believing in what we're capable of doing, when we stop trying, when we stop learning, when we stop opening ourselves to opportunity. I spend a lot of time with young people. Them, them, I mean, and I, when I spend time with them, I take notes and I'm learning from them. I spend a lot of time with older people, some, some, some women who set we were trailblazers before we knew what trailblazers were who were going to university at that time when it was two women in the class in my law graduating class it was 85 percent women so the reality for us too even as women is that we are we are adulting at a different time so i cannot be a slave to what anybody says 40 should look like and be like i'm 16 i'm dreaming large I still have doubts, I still have fears, and some of them come with the aging thing where you're afraid to step out and stuff. But then I remember what 16-year-old Russia would do. <laughs> She'd be like, I can do anything. I can do anything. And sometimes we just have a jump out and the, the big the big person is like, little girl, what kind of madness is this? What kind of madness is this? But it will all work itself out. Because even if it doesn't work out exactly how I plan, I have learned. I've met some people. I've made some connections and I'm moving through. I'm always cutting and going through. So don't give up that sense of wonder. And, and there's no luck. There's no luck. There's no luck. There's no, what, you know what luck is? What is the thing they call luck is? Preparation. Preparation. When we have that passion, because we start with the passion, because the passion makes us put in the time for the preparation. And a willingness, a willingness to take a bet on ourselves, to say, I could do, I could do a little bit more. I, I, I could try this. I've got it in me. And then people look at that as luck. Hey, no luck. Luck don't come to those who sit down and looking for it. <laughs> you gotta get up. Luck comes to those who did jump. Gotta jump. Jump. <laughs> you gotta jump. You gotta <laughs> jump. Give us some, some practical strategies and steps for anybody, any age, whether teenager, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you name it, anybody <laughs> that they can use to to elevate their life this year and moving forward. So that a year from now, they don't, they're don't, they not in the same position that they were, that they can yeah. look back and be like, I jumped, I, I was fearful, I had that adrenaline backstage. <laughs> that nervousness that Rochelle speaks of before she goes in front of that audience. But I used it as fuel to take me to that next level. Yeah. Share with us what they can do. So one of the things is, is being willing and able to stop. And the ability to stop for a moment, to even get your bearings. Where am I really? Because sometimes we're moving and we think we should be moving and we're doing the thing that we want to do, but it's not presenting itself how we thought it should present. And it requires some more work to take us where we want to go. So you have to stop and get your bearings. And the ability to get your bearings is a mindset that says, I'm about the growth. I am about the next steps. So, so I say, I, I like to say to people and when i'm coaching people i say stop for a minute let's let's figure out where we are because sometimes the reason why we feel like we're not moving is how we're tired we're burnt out sometimes you, you're doing the things you know but you're also you're so exhausted that you cannot even stop to celebrate the actual wins and many of us are in that place where we have to stop and we have to assess where we are and in that assessment um where did I think I actually should have been? So the big, I'm, I'm thinking I should be somewhere else, but where, where is that place that I thought I should have been? And also facing that I never really knew where I wanted to go. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you've just been moving along. The job has been promoting you. The, this is the job that you ended up getting. You had some children. You had a husband or a wife. And you said to yourself, this is what you are supposed to do at this phase and you are uncomfortable you actually feel sometimes like your body a twitch as my friend said the other day sometimes you feel like you're gonna burst out in a some bump because there's some things inside that are still not being fulfilled so i like to look at the things in in pockets i think because sometimes when you take things or too much thing you know you feel like you're overwhelmed yes so you stop and you ask yourself about things like where do i wish to be in my career 
and be willing to face one where you have some big, big dreams of where you want to be. Write them those do, do big dreams. Like sometimes it's so big, it's it's scary. Your hand is shaking to write it. And when you find that you've smalled up that dream because you're looking at your circumstance, you realize that it is smalled up in everything. There's no such word as smalled up, but you know what I mean? Yeah. You smalled it up in everything. So it is about how am I going to expand to where I want to go? Or it may be that this is where I thought I really wanted to go and I have reached there. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling at the top of my game, but I'm not feeling fulfilled because I feel like there is more. Because everybody is not in us. Some people are afraid to even step up because you're afraid that people say, you, you need more. You're going to learn that too. What does that have to do with what you're currently doing? That's not, again, the people, them are all right. Lead the people, them are what the people, them are set alone. Focus. So sometimes it is, you've achieved the vision that you set out, you achieved it. And you're just like, Wait, where's my next step? Where else am I going? We have to look at all of the areas of our life. Sometimes we are missing things like adventure because we've been so focused on work and the children that we haven't. And I thought one was self-care, we mean adventure, some things we didn't want to do. You're you always sleep. Yes. I dive. And you just wanted to do, you wanted to experience. Um, One of my friends learned how to play polo. She always wanted to learn how to play polo. And, and sometimes, you know, that, they, they, we think that everything, a, a success is centered around career. Career and, and, and paying careers help to fund some of what we want to do. But success is not about that. That's a part of our lives. So some people are successful parents. They've done a phenomenal job in raising amazing human beings who are capable of functioning, who are like, moving on with their lives and being able to live independent lives that is very successful that's a very successful thing to do and now the kids have, have left what am i going to do next maybe it's time for adventure maybe it's time for a career change so a lot of things is about asking ourselves the questions what are the things that have brought my soul joy what are those yearnings that when i see other people doing it i'm like oh man i would really want to do it can you imagine that every part of your journey is a learning part of your journey every part so, and there are sometimes we are in places that we need to be uprooted and moved because the sunlight isn't coming at us so we cannot bloom Ooh. there are other places <laughs> yeah sometimes I have to move to where sun can catch you no. <laughs> no, no. I know I know so, but wow no, that point resonated with me so much because I remember posting a thing on my IG. It was probably like a year ago. And it was literally about that same thing because I had a literal plant. Mm -hmm. And it was it was it wasn't blooming it was like literally drying up and then I realized somebody said, "Well, it probably is the spot where you have the plant. No sunlight is 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 catching it." Yes. And, then, and then I moved it from that spot and lo and behold, when I did, and you know, you watered it continuously, it started to bloom, bloom. and <laughs> flowers and everything. So, I mean, that, that is so true. Sometimes yeah. it's not the plant, it's not anything that's wrong with the plant, but it's the environment. It's the environment and you have to move to where the sun can catch you. And I'll, I'll wrap up with this, that I think one of the... The greatest blessings I've had is, and I spoke about it, a tribe, a circle. I have a circle of friends. I have circles of genius in persons who I can go to about business, about law, about life, medicine, anything. And I have my close circles and I'm a circles person. I, I, I don't believe I was meant to meet two people at all. I, I feel like I was meant to connect with multiple persons because that's a big part of even how I learn. And I, I treasure that I have people who believe in my capabilities. And even when I'm super, super doubtful of what I can do, they are there firing me up. And um, 
even with how prescient has grown and 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 sometimes it scares me because I still say, is this what I'm to be doing? And I see how God has handpicked persons from different parts of my life and caused them. So I have um two amazing team members who are foundation to prescient, Keisha Bryan and Jan um Rattigan, who I mean, they're not adjectives to describe how they have bought into the dream and have, have run along with it. And in many instances, pulled me along. And that they were persons who I, I met, I had to be in certain spaces to meet, to interact with, and to build a foundation with that we can now work together. Um, much of the work that my that the company does, um, I, I'm like, it's a grace of God company, a grace of God, because literally we have done no marketing, but it's a grace of God company. So it is networks that I that have been built over the years, people who have seen me in other spaces, which ends up causing your name to be called in rooms that you didn't even know existed. And when nothing thrills me, like when I get a call from somebody who is now in a leadership position that I knew when they were in entry level and they can tell me something that I said to them to encourage where they are now. And it just shows me that like you got to invest all around. You've got to invest your time, your energy. There's no one that is not good enough for your energy. In fact, I, as I said before, I'm humbled to be able to speak with people, to sit down and rap with people that them can call me. And because you just never know where you will end up and you never know where other persons end up. And and prescient has been built on that, on relationships and on people seeing what we are capable of doing and saying, I know this is not on your list of things, but I've seen what you guys did with that. I know you can do this for us. And we just jump and do it. We're like, we can do this. We can do this. We can do that. And that part that we don't, we, we bring in a partner for. So again, this has been... A, comp a new book for me. It's been just a new part of the journey. And, and this has been the true faith walk and trust. <laughs> and trust. And trust. Yes. Faith and trust. <laughs> powerful, powerful, powerful words. I, I have... I'm, I'm not normally speechless, but I am. This has been such a lovely conversation. And, you know, I appreciate you sharing so authentically, sharing about your journey. And as I said, that's just bits and pieces, viewers. It's so much more. But <laughs> it's, and just the nuggets of wisdom that we can use, we can impart, we can start doing today to transform our lives and become trailblazers in our own right as Rochelle Cameron. Thank you so much. Keep blazing your trail. Keep being that <laughs> adrenaline rush. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. We have Thank to you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Tamara McHale, television and radio presenter, producer, communication specialist, and of course, producer and host of the Trailblazers series. And I'm inviting you to be a part of the Trailblazers family as we continue to grow. So all you have to do is just click that subscribe button. Make sure you click that notification bell so you are alerted as to when we have new episodes and join our family for weekly inspirational episodes that will not only lift your spirits but give you the tools, the keys and the strategies that you need so that you can walk in your purpose, blaze your trail and be all that you have been created to be.